Hey guys, what's going on? Jeff here from Films at Home. And in today's video, we've got a double feature. Is it worth an upgrade? We're gonna talk about Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2 on 4K Blu-ray. Hey guys, so thanks for coming back to the channel. In today's video, like I said, we've got Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2 on 4K. These were actually sent to me by a viewer, which was super cool. Didn't have them in my collection. He sent them to me specifically to do a review like this and let other people know what I thought about them because he really liked the Ghostbusters movies and wanted to share them with people. So that was really cool. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at the visuals, the audio, and also some of the special features and the packaging on these and talk a little bit about the history of Ghostbusters on physical media because there's some interesting stuff there. Now, if you do like Blu-ray, 4K collecting, movies, home theater, any of that stuff, please consider subscribing to the channel. We're trying to hit our goal of 50,000 subscribers by the end of 2020, so you can help with that by subscribing. If you enjoyed the video, leave it a like, and let me know in the comments what you guys thought about these movies, if you have them in 4K, and whether you'll be picking them up after this review. So with that being said, let's jump right into it. So visually, both of these movies were obviously shot on film, being movies from the 80s. Everything was shot on film. And so there is a very filmic feel to it. There's grain structure. If you have a problem with grain, you might not love these. But the 4K does help with the grain. It adds detail and it makes the grain less distracting in my opinion. Now, the biggest thing with these is that there was previously a 4K master that was available on Blu-ray through Sony. And so Sony was putting out 4K mastered Blu-rays for a little bit. They did, uh, I think they did Men in Black. They did Ghostbusters 1 and 2. They did Glory. Um, they might have done Moneyball. They did some other movies and they were mastered in 4K. And so then when Sony got to the 4K format and the 4K discs were available with TVs and players, they jumped right into it and did these transfers because they already had the 4K restoration work done. So in that case, a lot of you may already have the 4K Blu-rays. And so the biggest differentiator here is going to be a little bit of an increase in resolution, but mostly on the HDR usage and the color grading because those 4K mastered Blu-rays were already pretty solid. Now, the biggest thing I saw on the HDR with Ghostbusters, the first movie, was that it added a lot of brightness and a lot of color, and for me, made it a much better picture. Skin tones were kind of washed out. Everything was a little grayish blue. There was a weird tint to it, and everything was very dark. And the HDR on this release really brightened it up, really made some of the colors pop, which helps the movie a lot because there are these splashes of color. But other than that, it's New York City. There is kind of a, a grayish feel to it, but there are some really great great moments where the HDR is really impressive, but skin tones were a huge one for me. Everybody looked like they were washed out, hadn't seen the sun in five years, and with the HDR in this release, that really helped improve that, and it made for an overall much better picture. Now, from a resolution standpoint, sure, there's some detail, there's a noticeable upgrade over the Blu-ray, but if you don't have a trained eye, or maybe you're not really looking for that, um, say if you showed this to the average person at a Best Buy that doesn't know the difference between 4K and 1080, they may have an issue seeing the difference, but if you know what you're looking for, you can definitely see an increase in detail. Now in Ghostbusters 2, the original color on this was better than Ghostbusters. Maybe it has to do with higher budgets, a little bit better equipment on the second movie being a sequel to a massive blockbuster. But either way, the HDR is a less noticeable improvement, but it does help in the same way it helps the first movie where it does make things brighter. It helps with skin tones, but to a lesser degree because the original was already pretty good. Now, I did notice more of an uptick in detail here than the original Ghostbusters, and I don't know why this is just, it has to do with the way they do transfers and the way things were shot, and who knows why, but there are definitely moments in Ghostbusters 2 that were improved with the 4K resolution and the 4K disc, and there were a lot of darker moments, I thought, in Ghostbusters 2, especially sort of the climax, um, and that really helped with HDR handling those black levels a little bit better and the gray uniformity. Everything looks better on the screen. It doesn't look washed out and pixelated. The blacks are really deep and dark, and so that was really important. They're both a very nice upgrade, but you've got to like HDR. If you really love the original look and feel of these, the HDR definitely changes that a bit. I think it's an improvement, but if you're a purist, maybe you want to stick with your 4K mastered Blu-ray because that's as good a picture as you're going to get without the HDR 
DR affecting the color at all. So it's kind of going to be up to you. But in my opinion, from a visual standpoint, I would definitely upgrade on Ghostbusters. And if I could find a good deal on Ghostbusters 2, I would do the same there. But this is the clear winner for visuals. Now, audio wise, they both have a great Dolby Atmos track. And I like the D Ghostbusters 2 Dolby Atmos track a little bit better. It has a little bit more to work with, but both of these movies have things flying around the soundscape. It's the perfect 80s action comedy, like Atmos tracks were built for this. There's a ton going on and they have a 7.1 true HD source. So that's great if you don't have Atmos, that's a very good track, but the Atmos really adds to it. There's a ton of uh, object based surround. You're talking about literally ghosts jumping all over the screen. And so the object based surround is really nice with the Atmos track. Also in Ghostbusters 2, I think it has a little bit more to work with because of the scale of Ghostbusters 2 versus the first one. Um, I mean, they're both pretty, mm, I don't know. That's actually... That's hard to say. I don't know which one I would say is a larger scale movie. Maybe even Ghostbusters, the first one, has a larger scale feel to it. And so the surround sound track is a little bit um, more in use. But I just thought Ghostbusters 2 was a little bit clearer. I liked the mix better. But they both have excellent Atmos tracks. I really have nothing to complain about. I'm just trying to pick a winner between the two. Um, and so you're not going to go wrong with either of these. The update and the upgrade to Dolby Atmos is definitely worth it on both discs. Now, packaging wise, uh, no slip cover on Ghostbusters. I bet it originally came with one because Ghostbusters 2 has one, um, but they both are 4K and Blu-ray. Interestingly enough, the um, the case on Ghostbusters says 4K and Blu-ray, no digital, but it had a digital copy in here when I got it. Now these are used copies, so I'm not sure, um, but this one says 4K, Blu-ray and digital, and on the inside, it only says 4K and Blu-ray. So I think it's just a weird thing where the slip cover says something different from the disc, but these both came with digital copies when I received them. Now for special features, they're all on the Blu-ray, so there's no real upgrade here. You're gonna get deleted scenes, uh, music video and a trailer, as well as um, kind of a look back, the Ghostbusters music video by Ray Parker Jr., a poster gallery, some kind of really, um, it's not over the top special features, they're a little weak. So you're not upgrading for special features here. If you're upgrading, it's to get that Atmos track, and it's also to get that HDR and that increased color, because that's really what the selling point on these is. So overall, if I had to choose one, Say I'm limited to budget, I would go with the first Ghostbusters because of the HDR and a really good audio track, but I do think they're both worthy upgrades to your collection. That being said, if you don't like HDR and you don't like the way sometimes it can mess with the original image on some of these older movies and you're a purist, you may not like these. So don't yell at me if you get them and you hate the HDR, I'm warning you now. But I would upgrade on both because I like brighter colors. I want more colors that pop. I want deeper blacks. I want all that in my home theater. And so I'm going with the HDR almost every time. I'd be hard pressed to find a Blu-ray I like better than the HDR, although there have been some. So I would upgrade both. You can probably get them for a good deal used. At this point, they're both hovering around $20 brand new. So you'd have to drop 40 bucks to upgrade them both. But I bet you could get them both for 20 to $25 as a pair. Somewhere on eBay, check your pawn shops. Uh, places like Bull Moose may have used copies. Check your used video stores, stuff like that. Um, and check around online and sites like eBay and Mercari and um, different places. Places like that, even like Craigslist or OfferUp sometimes has some good deals. So keep an eye out for those. I wouldn't necessarily spend the full $20, but if you get them both for 10 or 12 bucks a piece, that's a good deal. If you're a Ghostbusters fan and you really want to upgrade, I think you'll be very happy with them. So thank you for watching this video and huge thank you to the viewer who sent these out to me. He also sent me Karate Kid on 4K, so there'll be another video coming on that soon. But I was really excited to check out Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2. They're both awesome movies and with the new Ghostbusters movie coming out I think this year where they're kind of revamping the story and going into a sequel like 30 years later now's as good a time as any to, to upgrade these and re-watch them so um, both excellent transfers Sony does a really really nice job with their 4ks I've never really had much issue with Sony Pictures and Sony Home Entertainment 4K releases. They've been doing 4K releases, like I said, way back into uh, 2010, 2011, I think, when they were doing 4K mastered Blu-rays. Maybe it was a little later, 2012, 2013. But they've been doing it for a while. They've been mastering movies in 4K for almost 10 years now. So they know what they're doing and they did a great job on these. Um, the HDR is the only thing that's a little iffy. Not for me, but for the purists out there. So just be aware of that. I will leave a link to purchase both of these on Amazon if you do want to purchase through there you do support the channel that way but like i said i would opt for used copies if you can find them because they've been out on the market for a little bit you should be able to find a good deal 
So thanks for watching, guys. I'll be back soon with more videos. Like I said, Karate Kid 4K. I've got some new 4K steel books from Paramount that I need to show off. And I've got some other topics in the works for really cool videos. So make sure you're subscribed. If you enjoyed this, make sure you like the video. Let me know in the comments if you have Ghostbusters or you plan on picking it up. And I'll talk to you guys very soon with more content.